Alright, I'm Troy Humphreys and I'm going to teach you GOPE. Uh, GOPE stands for Goal Oriented Action Planning. Now you know why we call it GOPE because saying that whole thing every time is pretty annoying. Um, GOPE was popularized by a guy named Jeff Orkin. Uh, he worked on Fear, which was um, highly known for really scary and really interesting AI. Um, it's also used in a bunch of other popular games. Um, Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor, the new Tomb Raider series, the latest Deus Ex, uh, Transformers War of Cybertron, lots of good stuff. Um, so the best way to kind of explain GOPE, or lots of things, is to give you an example. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to build a very simple AI character. <coughs> and kind of go through the process to see how GOPE's used to build interesting behaviors. So the basic idea is that for every AI character, we're going to come up with a set of goals that it wants to be accomplished or it wants to be true in the world, and a bunch of actions that that character can do to manipulate that world. <clears throat> so for our character, he's going to be a simple guy that shoots a weapon at a character to kill it. So we might have some goals, let's say, kill target. Right? Let's say that's our high priority goal. Right? Our second priority goal might be patrol. Just if you don't have a target, just walk around, look, look intimidating, all that good stuff. Um, for actions, we'll say he can fire a weapon. Right? We'll say that's one thing. We can um, let's say he can pick up ammo. Right? And he can navigate. Right? And what GOAT's going to do is basically figure out which one of these goals it wants to accomplish, chain these actions together somehow, and basically get nice interesting behaviors out of it. The last kind of important part of GOAT is something called the world state. Now, world state is not like a state in a um, finite state machine, right? Our world state in GOPE is a collection of properties. And these properties kind of describe the character's view of the world, right? So in the case of our little shooty guy, he's going to have a couple of things. <clears throat> he's going to have a world state, uh, has target, and this is going to be a true, false, type thing. I either have a target or not. Um, another world state will be has ammo, and that will also be true or false. Now it doesn't have to be true or false, right? It could be any number of things, an amount or anything like that. Um, our last world state will be is he at an ammo box? Oops. Ammo box, right? And that will also be true or false. In our game, we're going to have an ammo box where the guy can go re and reload infinitely um, to be able to shoot his weapon. So with all of this, I'm going to explain basically how GOPE kind of chains together. So what we start with is this current world state. So the current world state, let's say, starts off as completely neutral, uh, which basically means it's made up of false, false, and false at sub 0, 1, and 2. 0, 1, and 2 relates to these three world state properties. So at the beginning, he's just standing there, doesn't have a target, doesn't have ammo, and he's not at the ammo box. He's just standing somewhere in the world. <clears throat> so we're running the game, and all of a sudden, the world state changes, right? And he all of a sudden has a target. Now, first thing we do is we go look at our goals, which are prioritized. And we go to the top one, <clears throat> and we say, should we try to execute this goal? And the way we figure that out is he's going to have a desired world state, which is going to be a subset of the possible world state that needs to be true uh, for this goal to be satisfied. <clears throat> so the kill target, he wants world state has target to be false. This goal hates targets. He doesn't want them. So at sub zero, he wants his desired state to be false. Our patrol is a, sub, is a lower priority goal, so we won't go into that one, but if this one was satisfied, it would go to this one and see if his uh, desired world state was satisfied. <clears throat> so that's basically that. 
So you can imagine what Gilp's going to do is basically use these things to build a graph, which is very hard to visualize, but there's a graph there. It's going to use this graph. <clears throat> it's going to do an A star through it to figure out what chain of actions are going to be required to satisfy these goals. <clears throat> so you can look at different states as being <clears throat> for, we have a kill target state, which is our desired state. So let's say desired, and it's got a state, and all it wants is that sub-zero is false. That's the state. The other properties, it just doesn't care about. They could be true or false, it doesn't care. It just cares that there's no target. <clears throat> our current world state is the other node in the graph. <clears throat> this node, somehow we're going to figure out how to change some actions to go from this state and this node to this state. Okay? <clears throat> the next thing it's going to do, the algorithm is going to say, hey, actions, which action satisfies this goal or this, this state? And to do that, these actions need to be decorated with some extra information. It needs three things. It needs preconditions, uh, pre, and effects. Both of these things, preconditions and effects, are subsets of world state. And the preconditions are basically be the requirements that this action needs to execute, right? So these things need to be true before this can execute. The effects are what world state changes when this action successfully completes. The last property that we need to do is cost. These actions are going to have a cost to execute, kind of like traversing a node or a connection in a graph. Right? They have a, like, just like A star, or just like pathfinding, uh, going from one spot to another typically has some kind of cost. Firing a weapon, picking up ammo, and navigating also have a cost. So just like any kind of graph, this is a kind of cost-based graph. So let's go through and decorate um, our actions, and then use those to chain and figure out our plan, basically. So, so for the fire, we'll just say they all have a cost of one, because we're not doing anything super complex, we're going to need to tweak these numbers, so they're all just worth one. Um, and let's go through our conditions. So, to fire a weapon, I need a couple things. I need a target to shoot at. So, sub-zero needs to be true, right? So, has target needs to be true for me to fire. Uh, the other thing I need is ammo, right? I can't shoot a weapon without ammo, so sub-1 also needs to be true for that to fire. When I fire the weapon, the hope, right, is that I'll kill the target and I won't have a target anymore. So his effect will be that sub-zero is false, right? Let's just pretend that our ammo is the same amount, the same amount of damage as the character's health and their one-shot kills and we're all good, right? Let's do pickup. So to pick up ammo, I need to have be at the ammo box, which is sub-three, so, or sub-two. <clears throat> that needs to be true. So for me to pick up ammo, and let's say it reloads as well. Um, I need to be at an ammo box to do so. <clears throat> the effect of picking up ammo will be that I have ammo now. So sub one will be true, right? Last but not least, navigate. I'll have no preconditions. I don't need anything to navigate. If you had a more complex character, you may want like have enough stamina or a skateboard or some vehicle or something. Um, but in our case, we don't need anything. But his effect, this navigate action only ever navigates to ammo boxes. So his effect will be that sub 2 is true. So now we have our actions. They're all um, decorated up with preconditions, costs, and effects. And we're going to use those to figure out our chain. <clears throat> so the first thing we do is our desired state is that uh, has target is 0. Currently it's true. We're going to say, hey, all you actions which action um, will satisfy this uh, desirable state. The only one is fire, right? When I successfully fire a weapon, my hope is that I won't have a target anymore. So the first connection in my graph, in this case, <clears throat> is fire. And then I'll make a new node, right, where um, uh, that basically will go from fire, and basically by executing fire, our target will go to false. So, but in order to fire a weapon, he has desired state as well, just like the world state. His desired state are these preconditions, right? He needs to have, at sub-zero, a target, so that it needs to be true, right? And at sub-one, 
has ammo, that also needs to be true. So now we went with one desired state that we needed to, to solve. Now we have two, right? So now we need to do the same process to figure out what actions will satisfy these. Luckily, has targets always true, already true, right? That started the whole process. So we don't have to worry about that. So we can just say, which one of these actions now satisfy this? Now, the way we pick what action, this is kind of where the ASAR comes in. <clears throat> so by executing this, there's a cost of one. Let's not remember, costing of, of doing an action has a cost, so it's one. To figure out which one of these actions, you can imagine we have tons of actions. Maybe some of those actions also satisfy these things. And what we want is the action that satisfies the most uh, world state properties. And that's basically how we figure out our heuristic. It's like cost to goal. So you can think of cost to goal, which in this case is our current state, is the number of properties needed to be flipped. Right? So since we have two properties that need to be flipped, the cost would be two. Right? And if one of these actions did two, that would mean it would get us that much closer to our destination, which would mean that node is better. So we use the number of world states that an action can satisfy as how good that action might be to solving our goal. So since we have a target, we don't have to worry about that. Now we just need to have ammo. And the only thing that satisfies that is pick up. So we'll do pick up. Right? That'll have a cost of one as well. He has preconditions, so he has desired state. So we'll say, hey, sub two needs to be true, right? And zero and one we don't care about. That's our next node in our graph, right? We repeat the process. Navigate satisfies this guy, so we'll do navigate. He has a cost of one, and that gets us to our current world state. Once we get to a world state that's the same as our current world state, we know we found a satisfied, or a plan that will satisfy our desired goal, which is navigate to our ammo box, pick up some ammo, shoot at the guy, hope you hit, and he dies. If he doesn't, if he gets to fire, right, and fire fails, right, then you just replan and do the whole thing over again. So what ends up happening, the graph is you're going to have tons of these actions, a whole bunch of actions. And you can imagine all these actions being connections to possible combinations of world state, right? And what we're doing, what, what GOAT does, is try to say, and like, patrol would be another node in the graph, right? With possible actions that satisfy it for world state. And what GOAT does is say, how do I traverse this kind of dynamically created graph to come up with an interesting behavior, right? It could go boom, 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 boom. That might be a really cool behavior. What's cool about this, as a designer or a programmer, you don't have to come up with behavior. You just got to say what logically happens if you do these things and what he wants to satisfy. And that's basically go up in a nutshell. <clears throat> so there's some pros and cons. The pros are you have nice modular pieces. When you're thinking about firing a weapon, you get to think of a nice little atomic thing that you can give to different characters and decorate in different ways to get really nice behavior, right? So if you're doing <clears throat> like front-end state machines, a front-end state machine, you're going to have to worry about like those states need to know how to transition from state to state, right? Because so you can't really swap those states out because they need to know about those other guys to do handle certain state changes. <clears throat> With this, it's nice, nice and modular. You can share actions across characters, all that good stuff. Another nice thing is that you don't really have to think about the behavior. It's going to figure that out for you. So you're going to get nice immersive things that happen that you weren't planning on. So the guy might just, you know, be doing his normal behavior, but a grenade gets thrown at him, and he has a pickup grenade and a throw. So he just happens to pick up the grenade and throws it. So you get nice immersive like throwback behaviors and all kinds of really neat stuff. Um, another nice thing uh, about Gope is that um, it's incredibly modular. Uh, it doesn't emerge in behavior and. I don't know. That, that's, that's about it. <laughs> the cons are basically the fact that I said search. Whenever you hear the word search, that means you're basically searching through a whole bunch of data, which is slow. That data could be all over memory, which will incur cache misses. Um, since we're doing an ASAR search, that assumes a sort operation that's going on, which is also expensive. So that's not great. Uh, another con is kind of a pro as well is that emergent behavior. 
if you want a very specific behavior, tuning your costs to try to manipulate traversal through this graph uh, can be really difficult. You can spend a lot of time tweaking costs to try to say, like, no, every time you do, you know, the world's in this state, I want you to go this way, not up, right? Like, that's the only way you can tweak that is by tweaking these costs, and it can be a really frustrating process and, and really difficult when you could, when it would be nice to say, just do X, Y, Z, right? Um, another uh, downside is you don't know, since we're doing back propagation, we can't be sure. We can't even take the first step until we have completed a full search, right? If I was doing a forward propagation for my search, I could stop halfway through. Let's say I hit some kind of performance uh, a measurement, and I just say, I want to stop. I could at least have a couple of actions to execute right now in order to, to kind of like get myself halfway there. But with the back propagation, I have to go the full distance to even know what my first step is. So that's performance-wise, that could be a real pain. And that's go.